Welcome to our latest demo series, Network Change Reviews with Batfish Enterprise. Batfish Enterprise allows you to predict the impact of your change, allowing you to determine if the change works as expected and if it is safe to deploy. In this demo series, we will show you how you can use Batfish Enterprise to validate changes in both manual and automated change workflows. Now, I have a typical data center. I have Juniper MX devices as my border. I have a SRX fire, Juniper SRX firewall. And I release spine architecture based on Arista switches. Now we get a lot of requests for firewall changes, and so we've built a workflow in Ansible AWX for users to request those changes. This workflow automatically generates the candidate change that will satisfy that request and sends it to Batfish Enterprise for validation, followed by a Slack notification with the results from Batfish Enterprise and a link to approve or deny the request. So let's see this workflow in action. I'm going to go to AWX as a user and I'm going to request a firewall change, launch that template, and it's going to ask me some, for, for some very basic input. What is my service request ID, in our case, the service now ticket ID, the name for this new service, call it this fancy new chatbot, the servers that it's going to run, the IP subnets for those servers, in this case it's 10.200.30.0 slash 24. It's a TCP service. It's going to listen on port 8080 and 443. Uh, because it's a service that's accessible from outside my network, the input zone on the firewall is the zone outside, and the target zone, output zone, is zone inside. Voila. As a user, that's all I need to do to request a firewall change. I'm going to launch that workflow. I can see exactly what's happening by looking at the job results in AWX. So you can see quickly here. This workflow has generated the candidate config change, but I also have a series of test cases that are built based on this candidate change that also get sent to Batfish Enterprise. And now you can see that the change validation has been initiated. I also receive a Slack message that tells me that there's a change request uh, that has failed validation, and I can dig into why it's failed and figure out if I can fix it and then approve it or just reject it. So I'm going to go to the results of that change validation. You can see what the changes are. This is the config change that's been proposed to my firewall. I've got two test cases that I've created. One is just to evaluate the firewall policy change. So we have a cross zone policy uh, filter check. And we're trying to make sure that we're going to allow TCP 8080 and 443 to this destination subnet on the firewall. You can see before the change, it's not allowed, which may so that's good, the change is necessary for this. After the change, I see everything is permitted, so that passes. The one that fails is my service accessibility policy. So once I've tested that the firewall is doing the right thing, I wanna make sure the rest of my network is configured properly to allow this service to run. And here I can see that while it fails before the change as expected, after the change it's still failing, but it looks like it's partially failing, where people trying to reach TCP 443 are allowed in, but people trying to reach TCP 8080 are not. So I can debug that failure from here by just following this traceroute link, which will show me why it's getting denied. So you can see that I'm getting denied at both of the border routers. So let's look at border one. It's getting denied by the filter ISP inbound, and I can also see exactly why ISP inbound is denying that flow. Well, it's denying it because there's no match. So it did not find a rule that permits uh, 8080, so I can go back to my change review dashboard, and now I can debug that. So let me go to the border router. Let's look at its config. I'm going to search for the filter ISP-inbound. Look at this definition. You know, I can see that there's nothing here that permits TCP 8080 as expected. So let me fix that. So I can simply just propose this additional change. I'm going to call it permit HTTP alt. Set it to port 8080. Copy that same change to the border router. And now I'm going to update the change review. So Batfish is going to take the firewall changes, which came in from my automated workflow merge them with the ACL changes to the border routers and update its 
uh, network models. And then I can rerun these validation steps once that's done to see if this is sufficient to get my change request to pass all of its tests. Great, I can see that you know, both of my test cases now pass. If I go to my policy page, I can see that of my nine policies, all of them are passing. So I haven't violated any network policies. Quick glance at compare, you can see that, you know, so I'm modifying three devices, no changes to routes, routing protocols, just some reachability change, which was expected. So now I'm good to go. Uh, so I can go back to my Slack channel and I'll see that I've got another notification from Batfish Enterprise that's telling me, hey, now all my validation changes have passed for this second uh, for this change request, change number two. I can see the results, but I already know what they are. And I also get a notification to approve this workflow in AWX. And so I'm going to log in as an administrator and go to AWX and find that workflow. So here I can see here's the approval. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to approve that request. And as soon as I approve that request, now the changes will get deployed to the network. Well, let's look at what that looks like. So if I go back to my original job uh, that I requested as an end user, I can see that that has now completed the full workflow, the approval happened and the change was deployed. I can look at the output of the deploy script and I can see exactly what was deployed. I can see that the changes to the border routers were deployed. And again, these were not generated automatically. These were the changes I made in Batfish Enterprise. Uh, those were added to the changes that were automatically generated by the playbook and to the firewall, and everything was now deployed. This entire automated workflow would not have been possible with a virtual lab network in GNS3. It would require packet generators and automation scripts to generate millions, if not billions, of packets and logic to determine which packets were accepted versus dropped, and how that mapped to my network policy. And finding that initial test failure would have required countless hours of debugging in the virtual lab. But with Batfish Enterprise, you can combine manual review and approval with an automated workflow, and in less than 10 minutes, request a change, debug and fix the test failure, prove the change is safe and correct, get approval, and deploy the change to the network. That is the power of Batfish Enterprise. If you don't have an automated change request workflow, don't worry. The Batfish Enterprise change review can be triggered directly from the dashboard. We demonstrated this in an earlier video in this series. Batfish Enterprise predicts the impact of the configuration change, allowing you to be confident that it is both correct and safe. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at info@intentionnet.com or through the Contact Us page on our site, www.intentionnet.com.